so I'm Finovar with Prima Marketing and uh, Michael Stores and I'm here in my studio and we are going to do Facebook Live showing how you can alter the box. You can see it from the other side as well. We are in the right position and we are going to transform this ATC box, the one that you can buy at Michael's. This is exactly the same box as this one. You can see there are cards inside. This is the craft version of it. And there's also black and the one that looks like playing cards like this. Very cool. And then the cards inside look like this. So I've got the white one this time. And let's have a look what else we are going to use. So first of all, it's good to have your mold with you. I was planning to use one of the uh, wings from the uh, Prima mold that is available at Michael's now. Then it's good to have some embellishments. So my choice were mechanicals that are available at Michael's at the moment, this set. But I'm also going to use some of my Lotus, oops, some of my Lotus embellishments, these ones. And maybe some other cogs and gears just in case. This is from my mechanicals collection as well. Next, for extra finishing touches, I'm going to use some pebbles and also I'm going to use some screws, some more of my mechanicals, which are available in the craft stores all over the world. From the art mediums, you can again look at the essential kit and we can use 3D gloss gel and soft gel as well as white gesso. If you don't want to use white gesso, you can easily replace white gesso with white impasto paint, which is also available in this set, which is at Michael's at the moment. So you can use white impasto paint. It's even more white than gesso. It's a little bit thicker too. For extra touches, we are going to use art stones and mini art stones. And this is the set which is about Bart Michaels. I'm going to use the big packaging like this. And as well, we are going to look at the um, paints. So we are going to use the paint set called Fantasy. And I'm going to use Unicorn Hair Sparks and I'm going to use uh, mermaid sparkle sparks from that set but of course single jars you can find in your local stores so you will find these two without any problem or if you are buying at Michaels you, you need to look at the fantasy set okay and the last thing is this is an item that uh, is called Rust Paste. This is the first set of the Rust Paste. You can buy it in your local stores in a set like this, or you can buy it at Michael's as well. So this is going to be something for extra finishing touches on our project. There are three uh, pastes in the kit. We are going to mostly just use the red one, uh, maybe a tiny bit of brown, but as you can see on the packaging, you can create really cool in the projects with all three colors and there's much more of the sets available at the mar market now. So we've got uh, three colors here. So please, now let's have a look at the table. First of all, important information and thanks to one of the people who are watching my first Facebook Live, I noticed that problem. If you have the white box, the one which is available at Michael's, uh, the white is the only one which is coated. It's like the satin finish you can see as well here. So if it's coated with a bit of varnish, it's very good idea to start with a bit of sanding paper because you would like your mediums to stick better. The black one and the craft one, they are with the matte finish, so everything works nicely. But with the white and as well the printed one, 
it's going to be satin finish so this is a little bit resistant some of the things may come off so you know it's just easier uh, to use the sanding paper so I started the sanding a little bit before so you don't uh, need to worry it is all done and ready and I was also cheating a little bit and I made my wing in advance you can uh, let me see this is this one oh well it's much smaller now <laughs> so uh, my wing it was used uh, it was done uh, with paper clay but you can also use things like any kind of uh, soft um, paste similar to uh, similar to Fimo or you can use hot glue to create elements like this it's really up to you what you are going to use so this is this is the one I'm going to use in my project and here are the embellishments I'm going to use as well so in the first step I need to decide which way I'm going to make my composition I wanted my treasure box to open like this right so the whole composition has to go that way so wing is one of the biggest elements so I have to glue it like as the one of the first elements and the other big things I wanted to use are some flowers I've got uh, mechanical flowers like lotus flowers and please please ignore the strange noises my cat is here and he's going absolutely crazy so for example I've got a rose and two lotus flowers as well I've got some I also have some cogs and um, I've got the bigger ones that come from the set so I'm trying to build something out of that for you and adhesive maybe the 3d gloss gel or if you have heavy body gel they're both working great you can buy uh, 3d gloss gel in tubes or you can buy it in jars for example like a huge jar like this or heavy body gels only available in the local craft stores in this sides um, so now from here to here we have to start gluing element first then we are going to use the smaller ones for extra decoration okay so if you have any questions during the process I'm very happy to help I'm just double checking if I won't have a smaller rose but I don't think so this is the only one that I have left so let's start with gluing I'm going to put my 3d gel on the palette and I'm going to use it as my adhesive for that project so first I'm going to go with the wing and don't worry about the excess of the gel it is going to be um, removed later now I'm trying to add the other elements I would like to add this piece of chipboard cog that I found somewhere to my project if it's a little bit too big I'm going to cut off the end of it okay a little bit smaller this is the advantage of using chipboard you can quite easily adapt it to the situation just look at that isn't that just perfect we have a great start now I would need something bigger for that size so I'm looking at this or maybe oh, this this seems to be perfect solution when you're gluing with gel it's very hard to be clean so please don't worry you don't have to have everything clean later it's going to be covered with uh, textures so it's not going to be a big drama if uh, now you're going to see some <laughs> well let's say leftovers um, maybe some smaller cog to put here and this I will cut a tiny bit smaller hmm? okay let's go with this and this I have space here and here this is perfect moment to add some smaller elements like flowers into the composition okay well 
when the project is why the focus is unstable by the cell phone. Hmm. Well, that's interesting information. I will try to avoid white as much as possible. Ah. Okay, just trying to glue it down. Okay, now the other one. Okay, so now you, there are some empty spaces here and here, so I have to fill them with something. I have another cog that is going to go in this space. Oh, this one is still moving. More gel. Right. Thank you so much for joining and thank you for coming and seeing me now. Just let me glue the elements for you to start. Okay. Not bad at all, I think. We need some finishing touches and of course we need to remove the gel. So for the finishing touches, we can try to slide some smaller cogs, but we can also use some of the pebbles. So let's say I'm going to add this one in here, trying to slide it as close to the composition as possible. And then, hmm, these seem to be right. Let's add a tiny bit of pebbles to fill the empty spaces in between. But in the meantime, you can take the brush and dip it with water and remove the excess of the gel from here or here. This is just remember to use the water so it's not completely clogging your brush. And because we all love to create, but we keep forgetting about cleaning, accidents happen. Okay, now some pebbles for the finishing touches. If you want to, you can add pebbles also on the top of your project for extra texture. This is really cool effect. <sighs> can you hear my cat? I'm just so, so sorry for this. This is his time to play. And of course we were not home for the whole day. So he could play, but no, this is the moment when he has to do it. <sighs> it's just so annoying. Sorry. Sorry for the strange noises, it's Pushkin. Cat is creating, yes, I think he is trying to be more creative at the moment. Okay, so look, I'm just gluing more of the elements to fill the composition. It was a bit bare in some spots, for example here. And pebbles, they like to have company. So I'm taking bigger ones and smaller ones to make groups of two or three. For example, like this. Okay. I hope you can see them. <sighs> well, I'm, I'm very glad you are amused with my cat. I'm ab absolutely not happy about what is happening now, but you know, that's life. Okay, one more. And then something for balance on the other side. If you have little screws uh, or little beads, you can now add them in the middle of your flowers for extra finishing touches. Hmm. I would like really, really tiny pebbles. Oh, here they are. Okay, so you can see clean gluing is overrated. It's, it's really not that important to have everything clean. It's more important to have it nicely stuck to your background. <laughs> yes, well, go with the cat flow. I know this is just terrible. Like he is just the cutest thing ever and I'm absolutely in, lo in love, but <sighs> like really, uh, it is the first time I'm doing Facebook Live in four weeks and he has to do his things and noises at the moment. Like, this is very moment. Okay, so for the extra touches, I'm going to add a screw or two. 
maybe one here, maybe one here, and then one here to pretend these are screwed to my background. I want to give it a little bit more steampunk look, so uh, it's not only going to be um, in a little bit rusty colors, it's also going to have quite a lot of the uh, mechanical elements in it. Okay, I have some screws here. Well, they are collected from different packages, but if you're looking for them, there are sets which are called, for example, uh, knobs, and then you can get quite cool elements coming from uh, this package, or, for example, like this little nut that you can put inside of your lotus flower, because all the lotus flowers look much better when they have some details. Okay, so now just for me to feel a tiny bit better, I'm going to add one or two pebbles on the top of the spine of the box. Maybe one here. Hop. Of course I move the flower in the meantime. Sorry for this. Not my day today, I guess. Perfect. And then smaller ones. What is important when you are making dimensional composition is to be a bit more patient and take your time when you are doing the drying. Because if you are going to start painting right away, the elements are not going to stay. They are going to move in different places and this is very, very frustrating. So before we are going to go to the next step, I have to uh, use the heat gun and dry my elements. And uh, this is basically happening now. I'm happy with the amount of embellishments I have and I intentionally leave the leftovers of the gel around just to show you that in the next step, it's going to be possible to hide these imperfections. Okay, I just put everything together in one place. And I take the heat gun and start drying. Let's hope they're not moving. Well, almost there. I will be very, very careful. For the next step, you can use your white gesso coming from the um, set of the Essentials. This is Art Basics Heavy White Gesso. Or if you don't have white gesso, you can use white impasto paint, which is very thick white paint, uh, which you can use uh, instead of gesso. And it's going to be more white and more covering. However, paint is a little bit more expensive. Gesso is cheaper. Gesso is a primer. Paint is not, but impasto paints are so thick and so matte that you can use them instead of gesso for some of the projects. So now I need to get a brush. And if you think your paint is a little bit too thick, you can add a bit of water to it, so it's going to be easier. But really, impasto paints are super thick. And now we are going to repaint my embellishments, but also the spine of the book so everything will be nice and white and ready to go to the next step let's hope nothing will come off of course i should be drying that longer and of course you should be more patient at home don't copy me as i said before try to be more uh, into you know delicate drying give it some breathing time so the gel is not completely boiled and not bubbling but you know this is Facebook life we have to be really quick so I'm trying to repaint all of the embellishments as quick as I can so I'm trying to repaint the roses okay and the lotus flowers and of course the wing and the big lotus as well yeah okay so you can see we are almost there well, perfection is, well, a little bit overrated. I will paint 
the back as well because I would like to drip my paint and my rust on the back of the box. So it's going to be very old looking, very, very rusty box. I just need to also drag from the other side. So before we are going to do the painting, we have to add some finishing touches. I'm taking my art stones and mini art stones, two of the one of my favorite art ingredients ever, I think. And I'm going to sprinkle them on my project. That's why I told you that a bit of the uh, extra gel is not going to be a big deal. Oh, I just found one spot I missed when I was painting. Sorry for that. Of course. Okay, so they are very lightweight, little stone-like effect, uh, effects. You can buy them in the big jars like that in your local craft stores. And uh, you just need to look for something which is called art stone, right? And um, in Michael's source, you have them in the cute kit of three smaller jars as well. So this is medium size and this is mini size. There are also the mega art stones, which are really big, but a bit too big for our project today. Now, we are going to add uh, these in between our embellishments. So we will have lovely textures you can see here, I hope, right? We have to stick them with something and the best way to do it is to have some uh, liquid adhesive, something which is going to be easy to um, add. For example, soft gel that also comes in this multi-pack. The soft gel is also available in the jars like this. This is product which was the first one. We uh, later added the tubes. And if you can find a fine tip bottle or like fine tip I just found, uh, you can also apply directly in the selected places. It's perfect glue for all your scrapbooking and paper crafting needs as well. It's collage medium, but it's super sticky. So if, if you're looking at me now, I'm just putting that in all the cavities, all the spaces where which I would like to fill with uh, art stones. And of course you can do the same just using your brush. I'm just going to use my brush to per make it a little bit more precise. And later I'm going to sprinkle two sizes of art stone on the top of my project. <sighs> yes, vacuum cleaner food, I know, they go everywhere. But aren't they beautiful? I think they're the most adorable thing ever. So... I'm sorry, but I'm, I don't feel sorry for you at all. If you like them, I'm on the same boat. Just imagine how much of that stuff I have to vacuum myself. <laughs> okay, so I have it everywhere. Now I can easily, uh, I can easily sprinkle the big ones first. So they're going to stick in the places I would like to have them. For example, close to the composition or inside of the flowers. They're going to give it this uh, very old and distressed look to my box. Remember, we are making rusty treasure box. So it's going to need some extra textures to look older than it is. We are turning something completely new into something old. So we need to help it a little bit to create more convincing effect. So sprinkling and adding the textures. Okay, once I'm happy with the placement of the big ones, or almost happy, because they will just go where the, wherever they want to go, then we will go to the smaller ones. And the smaller ones I will try to do over the paper towel, just in case. Which means I hope to save 
some of them. Miracles happen sometimes. So you can see how nice the texture is. Maybe a tiny bit more of the adhesive in here. Okay. And I think I'm missing the texture here, so a bit more of the gel. So this is ready for drying. Now I'm trying to put my art stones back in the jar. That was good. And in a moment we will start painting. Okay, so they should be hopefully dry enough to paint. And to get the, the color palette I'm showing you here, it's a tiny bit of the patina, a lot of sparkly effect and then rust we have to go through two stages the first step is going to be adding the sparkly effects and i picked two acrylic paints i picked sparks unicorn hair and sparks mermaid sparkle they're both uh, part of the mermaid kit that is available at michael's or you can buy them separately in your local craft stores they just look like this I have to tell you, Unicorn's hair is probably the most uh, popular paint from Sparks ever. It's just absolutely amazingly beautiful. Sparks are super shiny. They have a special kind of mica in them. Just look at that. They almost like mirror effect. And they're going to help me to create the look on the top of the box. You're going to you also use the sprayer. You've seen this technique if you were watching my last Facebook Live, so that should be easy for you. So we are going to add the colors and then water them down so it's going to be almost like watercolor. I'm adding a bit of the mermaid uh, sparkle, which is a bit like patina color, mostly in the bottoms of my composition. And I'm adding unicorn hair on my embellishments. You can do it carelessly because the water is doing the trick for you. So that is what we are planning to do. This is first step. And then we add water. Yes, Sharon is right. Unicorns are very rare and they don't donate the hair very easily. You have to make a really good deal with them to get some of the hair. So you can just imagine how hard it is to create the paint like this. Yeah, I, well, I personally was trying to negotiate some good deal, but apparently I was not the best person to talk to them. Maybe in the future I will learn more about unicorns and I will be able to get a better deal for us but you know I was trying I was doing my best look at that it's almost like super sparkly watercolor this is just what we want now and we will repeat similar step on the top as well just look at my <laughs> paper towel it's amazing We want this mirror effect everywhere and of course before we go to the last step we need to dry it. I want to have quite a lot on my flowers because I really want to have it super shiny in between and the rust. Adding some touches. So it's going to be super shiny. So, so far we've got our, our background which was sanded down 
then uh, we've added uh, the embellishments using 3D gloss gel or heavy body gel as an adhesive. Later we painted everything with uh, white impasto paint, which is very, very thick paint similar to gesso. You can use white heavy gesso instead. Then we sprinkled the art stones and uh, using soft gloss gel as the adhesive. And finally we added Sparks paints in two colors. It was Mermaid Spark, Sparkle and Unicorn hair to create a super shiny, a little bit like patina look effect. So the last step is going from here to here. I can see, okay. Now this is what I was trying to tell you. Pushkin is saying hello and that's also goodbye at the moment. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just, I just can't even know. Okay, <laughs> that was yeah, Pushkin. So we're going from here to here. We need to add the rust. And we are going to use the, the rust effects from the kit, which is available in the local club store. This is the first original set. And I can, you can see I'm storing that upside down. That's why it looks so funny. It helps uh, prevent drying. But the most important thing is, please remember to close the jars quite quickly. I prefer the red rust for this kind of step because it is going to be really lovely after drying. It looks much brighter in the jar than it looks on the project. And now in the last step, I'm adding this rust paste in all the spaces where water would naturally collect. I think I need to get a better brush because this one is not doing much. Oh, this one, for example. Try to use old brushes for this. It's going to be much easier. And again, before drying and the paste dries quite quick, quite quickly, you have to water it down to get this beautiful dripping effects on your project. Paste is coarse and water-based. It's something between water-based uh, paint and texture paste. So if you see your paste is getting too thick, you can always add water to it before closing your jar. So you can see what I was doing. Now I have to uh, go and add water to it so it starts floating. Yeah, this is exactly what I wanted to get. You can help your brush a little bit. Just look how rich the paste is. Okay, so I'm adding my rust paste as an accent color, as a last step. And I try to put it in the places where the rust would naturally collect. And then I will dry it and have a look if it's enough. A very simple effect, but well, very simple to do, but very beautiful effect. Just remember that it dries really quickly. So don't wait too long. What happens with the rust paste, it turns matte when it is drying. So it looks much more natural after drying than this a little bit funny thing that you have in your jar. So you have to give it a chance. You have to believe me, it's going to work. Just a closer look. Very quickly it's transformed. Now, how to make cool drips? The easiest way to make drips, for example, the ones like this, is to start with a lump of <laughs> paste somewhere on the edge and then watering down and let it go like this. Water is doing all the work for us, right? If you think this is too much, you can always try to remove part of it with the baby wipe. Yeah, so it's going to be less, but really it looks very cool if you just let it naturally happen. 
Some people are removing a little bit too much because it looks so dramatic when it's wet. But once it starts drying, the effect is just beautiful. It's that easy. Yes, that's so easy. And you can combine different colors. You can add more yellow to get the effect more into golden tone. You can add brown for darker ones. I like to make drips with the red one. How simple was it? And how pretty? It's absolutely you know, like one minute and done. The same happens here. Just look. Now it's time to see if I need any more contrast. If you feel that it's a little bit without contrast, you can always put more of the um, rust paste in the selected places and let it stay there just naturally or add a tiny bit of water only. You don't have to always water down everything. It's really up to you. You know, try to think how uh, the rust would work in na the nature. Okay, so after this step, we can only add a tiny bit of finishing sparkle. So let me dry it for you. Ready. Here it is. If you would like to get some extra finishing touches, you can always add those lovely shiny splatters on the top. I used again unicorn hair. Look at that shine to get these splatters on the top of my project. If, because the paint, acrylic paint, is naturally sticky, I always add some water into it before splattering. So it's getting a little bit more illiquid and easier to take off from the brush. You can do it with any acrylic paint, any kind of metallic paint. Now, in the meantime, when I'm splattering, uh, just to let you know that this is just one of many ways of using the uh, rust paste. There is a very good video that I uploaded uh, about two years ago to my YouTube channel and it's featured on my website finavar.com and on, uh, on finavar at michaels which is a special website where you can go and find a lot of beautiful tutorials focusing on the products which are available at michaels stores and great for beginners. So um, there is a video showing how you can get the full coverage of rust and I'm altering the project that you can really see on the box of the product. So if you're interested in getting that look you have to see the video and then there is a full uh, tutorial how to get the full coverage of rust using the three colors that come in the kit. Just check finover at michaels.com and it's in the videos section or go to uh, my website which is finover.com and then you will go to video tutorials and you will find this video. If you, if you are looking for uh, projects with the products uh, you can see here you should go to finover.com and every Monday and every Friday my super talented design team is working on new projects for you and if you'd like to see very simple small ideas to start finavar at michaels.com is your place to go i really suggest to follow prima marketing blog as well because they have so many beautiful um, projects which are um, a little bit lighter look maybe not as heavy as mine so you can find great inspiration and if you would like to uh, be you know, up to date with everything, the easiest way is to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Really, I have two accounts, Prima has accounts, and it's all posted there. And, you know, I hope this was something that you liked. I made it for you. And uh, as you can see, in just a few minutes, you can create really dramatic look on your project. This is the sample I made before. And this is the one we've made together now. So if there, if there are any questions, please let me know. 
uh, we were using sparks paints we were using rust paste and we were using a range of art mediums as well so you can see them now on the table <laughs> in front of you we were using pebbles molds and embellishments and this is the result so i hope that was something you uh, enjoyed ah, this that's me again thank you so much for joining thank you so much for uh, spending this time with me and i hope everything was clear i hope you are more encouraged to try the rust baits now and if you are wondering patina paste works very similar way this is the set of green and blue patina colors and then some metallic they're all from the same family they are all water-based so you can play with them like you play with the paint thank you for all the hearts and all the love you are so kind and thank you so much for watching if you'd like to know more about the products really we have plenty of inspiration and information on the websites so don't be shy try to check finnevar at michaels.com and you'll see a lot of lovely content and if you are going to go to my website finnevar.com you will see oh, i can't even imagine how many beautiful tutorials waiting for you different styles different ideas from all my design team members and my brand ambassadors and me as well so thank you so much and uh, don't forget that uh, prima is uh, trying to give you the best uh, support online i'm doing my best on my side just follow us make sure you tell your friends that we are here and i hope to see you soon maybe in two weeks i will try to make another live uh, show for you if so thank you so much and thank you sharon for all the support i'm going to say my goodbyes now and well just <laughs> one more look on my messy studio yeah i know i know it's not that good and uh, i hope to see you all again Thank you so much and thank you for joining.